bless you. Welcome to the Ryder Cup 2018. Bonjour, I am at the Ryder Cup. If you don't speak French, that is French for hello, I'm at the Ryder Cup. This is going to be quite a short video because I'm here to watch the golf rather than talk to myself but I thought it would be quite a good opportunity to talk about the pros and cons of watching golf live in the flesh versus watching on TV. This is match number one, representing the United States of America, Brooks Kepka and Tony Finnow. <laughs> representing Europe, Justin Rose and John Ram. most interested in is seeing all of the action then definitely what you want to do is watch it on TV obviously you can then watch action from loads of different holes they've got cameras everywhere you don't miss anything whereas when you're watching it live you can only really be in one place at any one time obviously um, so you can either choose to try and follow one group around and then you miss all the other groups or you can kind of sit in one spot and watch all the different groups come through this is what happens when you miss the media bus we've got to wait 40 minutes Nice and high tea, like yeah. I say. Maybe one stop and tea it high, swim underneath it. Shank, shank, shank. That's not very easy. But not as hard as he made it look. <laughs> no. Beauty. You know, on TV they've got slow motion cameras, replays, pro tracer, all that kind of stuff. So if, yeah, all you want to see is as much pure action as possible, then TV is your best bet. However... There are loads of benefits to being here in the flesh. The most obvious one is the atmosphere. Obviously, not every event is like the Ryder Cup where you've got fans passionately cheering their team on. But even if you go to the Open or something like that, the atmosphere will be in there. They just can't capture that on TV.
if you're going to go and watch it live and you're worried about missing out what's happening, get yourself a radio so you can obviously keep up to date with what's happening around the course. Um, and also there's big screens normally kind of dotted around the course so you can see bits of action from there. The way I look at it is that the events I've been to, I remember being there and watching them a lot longer than I will events that I've just sat and watched on TV. So, you know, I watched the last few Ryder Cups on television and whilst I can remember them, this will stay with me for, for life. Representing you, Rory McIlroy and Ian Potter. I didn't get the camera out in time. Oh. I'm the slope, whisp the slope <laughs> whisperer. Why, why would people not be wearing golf shoes? Like, I mean, I, I kind of... They're the most ridiculous shoes. Oh, yeah. He's wearing yeah, boys 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 got How grippy are they? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Call that one before no, it even happens. Just solid shoes. The wind can pick us up. Especially if you've got leather soles. Oh. See you later. Another thing that I love about watching golf live is that it always gets me really excited to go and play golf again. Like watching on TV does that to an extent, but when I watch golf in the flesh, I literally can't wait to get home and go and play golf. I always notice that when I'm watching these players, everybody has got such a smooth swing. Like, you kind of think, you know, the speeds that they generate, which are obviously huge, must be swinging it really hard, but they all look like they're putting in less effort than 99% of amateurs that you'll see on the first tee of your golf club. These guys, they look like they're putting in no effort, and then they're swinging it at 115, 120 miles an hour. I'm just say a good shot. There's little things like that that you kind of pick up, you know, bits that you see of short game and their routine, which you probably don't see on TV because they're cutting from shot to shot. see players go through the whole routine which can actually you know give you little ideas things to try I'm not saying it's necessarily gonna make you suddenly a much better golfer but you probably learn more from that than you do watching the kind of dodgy swing analysis that you sometimes get on Sky Sports. All right. First part. I've only been to a few events so obviously I'm not the expert on this matter so I thought I would ask a couple of my mates who have been to a lot more events than I have Hi, so this is my good, I haven't started yet, oh. I still wait till I press record. This is my good friend Kit Alexander. Kit, what is your view on watching golf live versus from the comfort of your home on TV? 
Uh, it's quite an interesting one. I normally quite like being at home in the comfort of my TV, especially something like an open where there's so much going on, you can't always see it because Lynx courses aren't always the best. Yeah. It's great to get there early in the week for an event like that, feel the vibe, feel the atmosphere, see the course, see a bit of golf and then get home for the weekend. Oh, nice. Whereas the Ryder Cup in every sense is a completely different beast. I mean, the courses it's been on the last few years, I've been lucky enough to go to the last three, this is my third. They've been good viewing courses and Golf National is the best viewing course I've ever seen. The atmosphere at a Ryder Cup is a notch up from everything else, even an Open, even a Masters, which I've been to as well. So ordinarily, I'd quite happily sit on the sofa, watch everything unfold so I can see what's going on, see all the storylines. But for one week every two years, there is nowhere else I would rather be. And that is at a Ryder Cup venue host course, right there in the action, seeing it uh, all unfold. It really is an incredible spectacle, which if you're a golf fan, it's got to be on your bucket list. Whatever it takes, whatever it costs, Get to a riding cup. <laughs> God, that was good. Anyway, I saw already has. So this is Rob Jerram. Hi. He's got the sun in his eyes. How's so. it going to move? Yeah, sun's in my eyes there. Uh, I was keeping my shades on just for the aesthetics. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want to see my eyes. I'm very tired. Uh, it's been a long week. What do you think, Rob? I don't think there is anywhere better you can be. Yeah, I've been to the last two at home. I wasn't at Hazel Team, uh, thankfully. Um, yeah, the atmosphere, this one particularly, the atmosphere here has been incredible. Scotland was fantastic and the weather was obviously very kind in Scotland. The crowds were fantastic, but they stepped up a notch. That grandstand just behind us there is absolutely incredible. Um, it was a little quiet possibly on the first morning. We were a bit, yeah, I'm not sure if it's quite kicked off. Maybe the, the talk of it not fitting in in France is, uh, is correct. But no, the last two mornings have been incredible. This morning was electric. And uh, I, there's nowhere I would rather be at all. Some of the arenas they've, they've got around here, because of the way the green complexes work and the banking around them, means that particularly the par threes and then the ninth, which is yeah. a par five, you just you, you don't get that on TV. Even though you can sort of feel like you can tell what it's like, actually being there, the amount of people, the noise, even you know Tiger just made an eagle putt then when we were out there it was absolutely incredible. And now we're going to go off to a great location at 16, which is probably roughly where the Ryder Cup might be won. The amount of people around there, if that is where it's won the Saturday, will just be incredible. I've, no doubt watching on TV is great, but you just don't quite get the atmosphere in your lounge that you're going to get when there's, over the course of a week, quarter of a million people all supporting yeah. Europe. Lucky boys, aren't we? Yeah, very lucky boys. Lucky to very, be very, here. Very lucky boys. A bit tired though. Oh, the sun in your eyes and you're a bit tired. Do you want me to put the violin music over this bit? What's happened, Kit? Yeah, trivia. Yeah.